This is my dog that I adopted back in the springtime. He's really the best dog you'll ever meet. He's super friendly, super trainable, very nice, usually very quiet, and just overall an amazing, amazing boy. Uh, I'm sure every owner says that about their dog, but I really think it's true when it comes to mine. Um, the only thing is he has some separation anxiety. Um, I got him in the middle of the pandemic and I've been working home from home full time and he got very comfortable with that. So when I would leave the house, he would just sit by the door, wait and howl and be anxious and upset. And you won't see that in this clip here because I've since, uh, trained that out of him. And the way I did that was by designing an automated treat dispenser using some Python and Arduino some 3D printed parts and a couple servos so that I could train him to be more happy and comfortable with being alone uh, while I'm out of the house and have it all be automated essentially. The basic idea is that I would need a way to detect sound in my apartment so I could listen to him, make sure he's being quiet and then reward him by dispensing a treat so that he would get more and more comfortable with being alone and being quiet. Without further ado, let's get into the design. So this is the first iteration of my treat dispenser design. You can see it's essentially a tall tube that fills up with with uh, treats, pieces of uh, kibble, in the case for my dog, because he's not too picky. And I use one servo to open and close at the bottom and dispense treats. Um, there's this big chunky stand piece here to just make sure nothing, it doesn't topple over or fall over with the servo uh, vibrations and things like that, and the weight of the kibble. And then there's also this inclined plane piece here so that when the kibble falls out of the tube, it hits that 45 degree plane uh, bounces out basically gets some horizontal velocity and kind of shoots out that way instead of just uh, falling straight down um, I thought that would be a little bit better the kibble tube and the stand are two separate pieces that were 3d printed um, and then mounted together using uh, I believe it was m3 screws there it's just some mounting holes on either side here and yeah so the thing was using the one servo was not very liable reliable um, control because you know basically the idea is that this this servo arm just open and closes like a gate opens to release a treat and then closes again to block them but when you only have one servo um, it's very difficult to reliably get one treat out at a time so you'd often times I would open this and then uh, if it didn't close fast enough you know the entire tube of kibble would fall out the entire tube of treats would be dispensed in one shot or if you do close it too fast then Maybe you don't get any out, or maybe you um, close the arm as one is halfway out of the tube and you get a jam condition occurring. So it was a bit tricky, um, didn't really work very reliably, and wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So we had to do a little revision, and what I came up with was adding a second servo here, uh, a little bit higher up. So you can see I had to change the design of the tube a little bit to allow some... Uh, some supports for that servo, that second servo to be mounted there. And basically the way this works is you can see I'm also using just a, another servo arm and there's actually a cutout in the tube here. Uh, not sure if you can see that, but maybe you can from this side. So there's a cutout in the tube so that that servo arm can swing right into um, the kibble tube or the treat tube. And how this works um, kind of like an airlock is that this first, this uh, sorry, the new servo, the second servo, um, arm clamps the piece of kibble that's basically second in line, it clamps it in place, then we open the bottom, dispensing the piece of kibble that's immediately below that, the, the first kibble, uh, the one that's on deck basically, that dispenses out, then we close the gate again, and then we open the second servo so that the whole stack can shift down one, and we just repeat that process every time we want to dispense. And this was much more reliable in getting uh, one treat out at a time and being consistent in that regard. So here are the 3D printed parts um, assembled and ready to go. You can see there the stand on the bottom and the tube that will hold the kibble. And then those are the two spots where the servos mount. Um, I'll just show you how a piece of kibble goes down the tube. Um, just slides right down and then bounces off that 45 degree incline at the bottom and shoots out basically. Next we'll uh, we'll just mount the servos on there and you can see the print has these little pegs um, that line up with the basically the servo mounting holes so they can kind of clip on and hold in place. So we'll just put the first servo on there like that. It just kind of snaps in. Um, 
and then the second servo goes on the other side. And then you can see here on the back that cutout that's in the tube for the second servo to reach in with the servo arm. And as you just saw there, they are a bit loose. They don't, they're not very snug or um, tightly held in place by those pegs. So I may have to use some tape to just hold them in place so that they don't wobble around or vibrate out of position while they're turning, being used. The two servos are being controlled by an Arduino Uno and powered by a six, uh, six double A's in series battery pack uh, to get nine volts. Uh, it's just what I had laying around and it's just taped up like that because the battery snap was a bit loose, I was getting a bad connection. And then um, that's plugged into a breadboard where I have an LM7805 to get a uh, five volts out for the servos, just a little micro switch so I can cut power from the battery pack to the servos. And then the servos are being controlled by this Arduino Uno up here, which is connected to my laptop running the Python program, um, which will listen using the microphone and send a signal to the Arduino when it's time to dispense a treat. And then the Arduino will control the servos and actually dispense the treat. I made this rough flowchart of the program flow for the Python program, which is controlling the Arduino. Um, and sending a serial signal to the Arduino of when it's time to dispense. So basically the program starts with a preset time interval. Um, you know, it will dispense after five minutes have been reached provided, you know, we get through the flow of the program and all the conditions have been met. And so the program starts with that and then begins listening to the laptop microphone to detect noises. If it checks if it has no detected a noise based on a threshold value that I've uh, experimented with, and then if there's no noise, we check to make sure if the time limit has been reached, you know, is, is, the, is the timer um, finished? If not, loop back and continue. Whoops. Um, if it has, then we dispense and we send a serial signal to the Arduino to let it know that it's time to dispense a treat. Then we create a new time, random time interval between a preset range um, so that my dog doesn't get used to exactly when it's going to come, like every 15 minutes or something, and you might become accustomed to that from the timing, want them to know that it's for being quiet, want them to reward, be rewarded for being quiet and not um, e be expecting when a treat is going to come. So this started off with between like five and ten minutes. Now he's much more comfortable. So I, I have a think I have it set to like between 20 and like 45 minutes, um, the random time interval. And once that's done, of course, we just loop back. If it does detect a noise, though, we increment a noise counter that I have. This is just so that we don't... Uh, basically punish like punish him, but uh, he wouldn't even know the difference because this is all happening in the background, right? Um, we don't want him, we don't want it to reset the program if just he makes one noise. The problem is if, or, or if, you know, somebody bangs on the, neighbor bangs on the window or somebody knocks on the door and somehow that triggers the noise counter uh, if it's too loud. So I want to make sure it's only triggering if he's consistently barking or howling. So we have a noise counter there. We check if it's reached the limit. I think the limit is like 10 that I have set. That just seemed to be what worked for me. Uh, or worked for the, the program. And if it hasn't reached the limit, we just continue as usual. If it has reached the limit, then we reset the time to a shorter interval that's preset in the program. So basically, if it was originally going to dispense in like 20 minutes from now, and he couldn't make it all the way, he got anxious and he started howling or whatever, then we reset to something shorter, like five, just to kind of build up that, uh, that gradual build of, of uh, getting him comfortable. And one thing that's not mentioned here is um, after this, the noise counters also reset and we just continue back to the beginning until all the treats are gone. Um, the program will keep running, of course, but nothing will be dispensed. Here is the treat dispenser fully loaded. You can see there's kibble all the way to the top of the tube. And I'll just show you what it looks like when it actually does uh, a dispense of a treat. So you can see the servo motion I was talking about before. Second servo goes first, then the first one, and we get that one treat dispensed, and then the next one's ready to go. And you can see that uh, when this happens, right, it dispenses one at a time, just like we wanted, and then the rest of the stack shifts down, uh, just from gravity slides down. So sometimes I can get jammed, but yeah, works pretty well. And actually, you can see right here, the, uh, the next kibble got stuck, so I got to give it a little tap tap, and then it came down. So not the most reliable, but it does the job. Here's my dog, and he's ba very patiently waiting for the dispenser to give him something. Go ahead, eat it, yeah. Good boy. 
So I usually just leave my laptop and the treat dispenser up on the shelf that's near my front door. That way it's up high enough that my dog can't jump up and get to the treats or knock over the dispenser. Now there's obviously a lot of room for improvement still with this project. I don't want to be using my laptop all the time to control this dispenser, so I'm thinking maybe I can replace the laptop Arduino combo with just one Raspberry Pi or something like that. So there's some options, and we'll see what I come up with. All right, the only thing that's left is to see what this thing looks like in action. And if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, I don't have a Patreon or anything, but if you'd like to support me, you can always buy me a coffee. Um, there's a link in the description, and there should be a link on the top of the screen as well. Thanks for watching.